my name is Karthik C and I'm from Bangalore. I am a project manager by vocation and writer by vocation. I'm here to add a bit of dark intrigue to this lovely evening. I'll be reading from my second novel called The Ulysses Pact, a short excerpt. Here goes. Chapter 1. The metallic squeaking repeated itself regularly, giving the cringe-inducing noise a weird rhythm and flow. The glint of the steel was dim, as the dullness around appeared to smudge all the colors, making the random shapes to overlay on each other with no differentiating features. The misshapen hands rolled the swaying wheels through the darkness and into the light, where the murmurs were apprehensive. The noise died down as the creaks of the wheel rose. As the wheelchair moved ahead into the tunnel of light, the dullness evaporated. The colors spread into the room, engulfing the bland silhouettes and replacing them with discernible shapes with defined contours. The featureless morphed into radiant people sitting expectantly in a decorated room. The plastic chairs were draped in faux satin and the bright red tape was tied around it, knotting in the back, forming a big bow. The Sunday morning sunlight pierced through the sealed glass windows, which was installed high near the roof on all the walls. An expecting woman in her last trimester sat in the front row, caressing her husband's hand on a bloated tummy. The husband was enjoying the little kicks from within, and it looked like the woman had had one kick too many. A baby was crying in the middle as the grandmother was rocking it to and fro, while the mother rummaged through her pregnant bag to look for the bottle. A small girl, dressed all in pink, screamed and ran with a red balloon with a parent behind her tail. A college student was looking at his phone, oblivious to his surroundings. A newly married couple were talking to each other in hushed tones, constructing their dreams together in the back. A father was jumping up and down to get the red balloon, which was now stuck near one of the sealed glass windows as the kid in pink cried beside. There was a sexagenarian looking at his old HMT Janta watch. Every time he looked at the time, he was also looking at the memories. He carries the long black wristband, remembering the time when he was relevant, remembering the time when he was gifted this watch by his dying father as a token of his ascension as the man of the house. It was so like his father, saying without saying that his time was up and it was time for his sons to step up. He had worn the watch through all the trials and tribulations that life had thrown at him. Each time he wanted to give up, he felt the weight of his watch, weight of his father's expectant glare coming beyond the grave, telling, asking, pleading him to move on. Just one more step. That's it. You are done. But he knew there would be another right after that. That's how you made me walk, father. Every scratch and tear on the watch showed his fight and he wore it with pride, like a bragging right. Who said time missions didn't exist? But he was done. He wanted to close the loop now. He not just wanted to travel back in time and return, he wanted to stay there. Stay there with his father, forever, period. He slowly rolled his wheelchair entering into the hall and moving further down the passage, leading to the empty stage to which he had no desire of reaching. The darkness cleared in his eyes and he saw the people were sitting on either side of him. The squeaking of his wheels had caused them to look at him. Some showed recognition and others stared in wonderment at the frail man sitting in the wheelchair, wearing a crisp white shirt and a navy blue pant. He was wearing a grey tweed checkered flat cap which masked most of his forehead and the shadow from the stiff brim covered the rest of his visage. I died 15 years ago. I died trying to save you ungrateful people by sacrificing my family, said the voice coming from the wheelchair. His lips didn't appear to move, but it looked like the sound came from within him, from some buried and broken part of him. He stopped rolling and pulled the brake lever beside one of his wheels. The squeaking stopped, but was quickly replaced by ticking. The ticking increased in sound and frequency and was drowned the next moment by a ball of fire which seemed to compete with the sun. All the glass windows were shattered and the cars started beeping in the parking because of the explosion. The wheelchair was thrown near the distant wall, now crumpled as a searing steel football. The mangled bodies were strewn everywhere, giving the appearance of an unholy anatomy experimented by a deranged god. Two pretty bows were burning, forming a charred cross and the remaining parts of the chairs. They acted as unmarked tombstones for the mass grave that had formed in an instant. In the middle was a frail hand, completely stripped of skin, with a black analog HMT Janta watch intact, where the ticking continued and the clock struck 12. Thank you. A small bit of gratitude uh, to Ink Feathers because, you know, 
writers are like virus they need a healthy host and ink feathers, ink feathers is giving a platform for those writers to actually infect people so thank you for ink feathers to organize